What is up, everybody? Josh Tapp here again, and welcome back to the Lucky Titan podcast. And today we're here with Jeremy Slate, who is the master commander brand guy. Honestly, this is what's hilarious about this. I've seen this guy's content forever. And when he's when he hit my calendar, I'm like, I know this guy. That very rarely happens, actually, funny enough. But uh, it was cool to have Jeremy come in. You know, he's the host of also it's the Create Your Own Life podcast, top 100 podcast. And this guy's been featured everywhere. So they know what it takes to show your brand to the world. And like their, their brand name is command your brand. So Jeremy, say what's up to everybody. Let's hop in, man. Hey, hey brother. What is up? Thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm kind of stoked to, to chat with your people today, man. Yeah, it's going to be great. I, I know we talked about this before in the interview too, Jeremy, but what I loved about our brands is that they're just kind of both sides of the coin, right? You're all about sure. helping people promote their brand through podcasting. We're all about helping them build an amazing podcast that then obviously becomes a PR opportunity for them. So mm-hmm. Let's talk through a little bit about your frameworks around helping somebody build a really powerful brand. So I think the the one thing first off is like getting really clear on like what you stand for. You know what I mean? Because there's some people that like, and I think this is, it's like really bad right now. Like people read 10 business books and they try to be like that person in every one of those books or like as a podcaster, they start a podcast where they tell the person, you know, they ask the person what's your story and they talk and then they give them 10 rapid fire questions and they call it a podcast. So like, you know what I mean? Like you have to get really clear on what you, and, 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 I, and I can't say much cause I started that way, but you know, I got better over time. Um, I guess we all get through rehab eventually. Um, but like the, the thing you have to realize is like, you have to stand for something. Like there has to be a reason people are going to come to you and people are going to understand where you're coming from. So I think that's first and foremost is like understanding, like what is your unique selling opportunity? What is your unique positioning opportunity? And then the other thing too, that people don't consider and I think this is something we think of because like of being in the PR space is we like the people that are going to listen to you, who are their opinion leaders? Who do they listen to? Because each one of those people are going to want to be communicated to differently. Like, you know, Dave Ramsey's on one side, Susie Orman's on the other, and they do not agree. And the people that listen to that person are going to communicate very, very differently. You know what I mean? Just like somebody that likes Rachel Maddow isn't going to like the person that likes Rush Limbaugh. So like people are going to come from people from a very, very different angle. So we actually tell people like, you know, what are the people that your people listen to? And then we can kind of get to know more about them. Another thing is too, like, you know, if your brand was a rock song, what would it be? You know what I mean? Like these are things you have to think about because you really want to get that vibe down and get something that people can connect with and understand. So that's kind of really, really where you got to start, man. A lot of people don't do that work. Yeah. I think it's because people are like, I don't know what to put down. Right. And, and it's, it seems like this big daunting task. I've recently been interviewing a lot of people with SEO yeah. And I interviewed a lady just right before this one, actually, because I was doing back-to-back interviews. She uh, totally like changed my paradigm with with SEO because she simplified it, and she obviously knew who she was promoting to. Like you said, mm-hmm. they, they knew the brand. She's like, "I'm not here to be this billion-dollar SEO company. We're here Correct. to say, here's these three simple things you need to do. That's what you pay us for." Mm-hmm. And I loved that. So you're saying with the brand, it all has to do with that that groundwork of saying who are they following. It's really saying where is the market, right? Yeah. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and 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 within that, like I, I like that you mentioned too with SEO, how she's saying like this is exactly who we service and what we do because so many times there's a lot of business owners that like, well, who's your mar- who's your market? Everybody. Well, good luck, man. Like you got to figure out exactly who you're working with, and the thing people don't get is in order to go big, you have to have to actually have to start very niche, which is kind of against a lot of people's mindset. But in order to kind of get noticed, you have to get a small group to notice you and you can grow out from there. So I think it's really vital to take a look at it in that way, because then like you understand how they think, you understand the questions they ask, you understand the things they need to hear, you understand their, um, I was talking to a copywriter about this the other day, um, Jennifer Hootie, she runs a company called uh, Conscious Copy. And she was talking about like, you actually want to get into the conversation that's happening within your prospect's head. You know what I mean? Because like, we all have a certain way we think, and it's not going to mean that everybody in your niche is going to think that way, but you're going to have a good idea of the conversation that's going on in their head and how you can get into that. Once you have that down, you can figure out what publications do they read? What podcasts do they listen to? What people do they read? And things like that. And that's where you really start a brand is you want to figure out like, what is the position you need to occupy in someone's mind? There's a really, really good book on this by uh, Al Rees called uh, Positioning the Battle for Your Mind. It's, I believe you wrote it with Jack Trout back in the 70s, um, but it's called Positioning the Battle for Your Mind. And it talks about like 
when you're getting positioning, it's what you're seeing full, uh, like against, like, hey, we are Pepsi, we are not Coca-Cola, right? Or what you're seeing similar to. We're like the Uber of blank, which I've heard way too many times. Um, but like you're grabbing something that's familiar to someone and you're connecting yourself to that. And that's actually how you get positioning and how you get seen and heard and known. Yeah, and, and I love the way you're approaching it because the problem that a lot of people have with this is they're like, okay, I need to choose a niche. So they're like real estate agents. And I'm like, that, that is not a niche, man. That's very broad. <laughs> That's very broad. And, and like, hey, well, are they luxury real estate agents? Are they ones that deal in foreclosures? Are they ones that deal in uh, flips? Like, dude, you could go so far in that. Yeah. And, and what's crazy to me, that's like you said, it's, it's just like when I, oh, anybody can use it. And like, well, yeah, no, duh. <laughs> anybody can use a spatula too, but that doesn't mean everybody <laughs> needs a spatula, right? Exactly. It's really interesting to me though. Um, and I'd like to hear your methodology on this because when they're trying to find that niche, I think it's more about the state that the person's in than like the job that they have. Does that make sense? Like a lot of them are like, I want to work I'd with say, just I'd say yes and no though, right? Because because the thing is, is doctors that are running a practice and it's a big practice where they, you know, they're trying to go national. Um, they're still going to be worrying about bills. They're still going to be worrying about HIPAA. They're still going to be worrying about staff there. So I think there are certain things that come with that business, right? Yeah. Um and then, you know, the state to me is secondary, right? Because, you know, I've met some, some integrative medicine doctors and you have some that are very like, you know, mindful and fluffy and stuff like that. And you have some on the other side that are rough. They both get amazing, amazing results for people, but actually like how they are is different than what they do, if that makes sense. Yeah. I love that. I mean, it, I was just kind of curious what your take was on that because there's like, I think some people, I think there's just a lot of different ways to take it. And it's like that yeah. ideal customer, right? The dream customers, 5,000 ways to say it, but there's like really figuring it out. Cause I remember listening to that over and over and over again. I thought I had a narrow niche until mm -hmm. I really like when somebody tries to ask you what it is, you're like, um, anybody with this thing, you know? So I, yeah, I, I love that. So I usually I put a mirror up to their face and I see if there ends up being some steam on it. They're my yeah. customer. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> so when it comes to building the brand, right? It's all about yeah. finding the people, find where they're hanging out. And so yeah. like you guys do as a company in particular, right? You're going out and saying, where are these people already listening? What are they listening Correct. to? Like, what, you know, where are they? So what's, what's kind of your process for finding those places? Well, cause so that depends too. Cause like the thing I like to tell people is like, there's a, there's a very narrow niche. Like, let's say you are helping uh, practice owners with uh, their financial planning, right? Um, well, there's a limited number of podcasts for that, right? And you're not going to get everybody on that. So we tell people there's different like lenses somebody's going to see you through, right? It may be like in building your own business. Like you may go on a general entrepreneurship show where somebody wants to see about building your own business. It may be on more of a lifestyle show where somebody people find out more about how your family does things around your business. So like you're going to have, when you build a, a targeting, you're going to have a very narrow niche that you start with, but you're also going to give people different ways to see you and understand who you are because you know, with any PR, it's a no like and trust factor, right? Like somebody may hear that you know it, but they can't connect with you as a person. You know what I mean? So you're giving somebody different ways to connect this. And, and that's at the same time, like, especially when you're launching a product, we like to do like blanketing the space, right? You go on a whole bunch of shows at once in a short period of time. Like, let's say, you know, you're going to go on like 24 shows in like 90 days. And because you start appearing in all different places and you're giving somebody the ability to hear all those different phases at once. So it really, if they don't catch them there, you catch them there. And that's really how PR is. You know, it's like you're giving people a different level of understanding of you and different level of trust based on how they're hearing you and how they're experiencing you. I love that. And, and I think, you know, as a podcaster myself, you know, and, mm -hmm. and we both work with podcasters, it's really unique to, to see I guess the frame of mind that people are coming into yeah. it, right? Like you said, because the, the lens through which they're, they're approaching it is, is just very different. Yeah. And so yeah. you, you kind of just touched on this, but I like to kind of delve into this with, you talk about doing like a blanket tour, like you said, right? we call them like yeah. the grand tour, right? You go, well, and that depends on like the purpose though too, because like the, the quote unquote grand tour right. is just, if you're trying to launch a product or a book or whatever it may be, if it's more general awareness, your goal is different. And that's going to be like much more spread out over time, but go ahead. Yeah, no, that's, that's a great point. And uh, for one of the things that most of the people that we work with when they're trying to get onto shows, it is more particularly mm -hmm. for a launch. And uh, that's what we found to be kind of the better use of podcasts. Would you agree with that? Or do you feel like it is okay to go and 
use as a so it, it depends right because like we've had we, we've done really well with book launches like we had a client that we helped them sell sell um you know somewhere between four thousand and five thousand books um so he did really really well with that um but then on the other side of it like we have um a lot of doctors that we go on that aren't really launching anything right now um but we've been able to get them on a lot of the right podcasts in their space like you know some of the larger ones in their space so that at the same time that creates more trust that creates uh, more visibility. It creates a lot of other things. So like um, we've seen both work, but it's really important that the person knows their goal, right? Your goal can't be general awareness, launch a book, sell my course, do this, do that. It's got to be a very narrow goal because how you operate and how you set everything up is going to be a little bit different as well. Yeah. I love that. You know, it's really unique to, to see, you know, your take on that because the, the problem that a lot of people have with going on to podcasts is it it's a quote unquote branding activity. And there's mm -hmm. a lot of people don't think they can actually sell through them. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to see kind of how you guys are training your guests to go onto these shows and actually turn it into something that, that generates revenue. Mm -hmm. because I know for us, even like yeah. when I go on podcasts, sometimes I'm like, what a waste of time. <laughs> well, because <laughs> you know? here's the thing, right? Like you, 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 you understand first and foremost, this is a brand building thing, but like at the same time you set up all the right things, right? So like we have a methodology when we're talking about going on a podcast where we call it story message called action, right? Somebody's personal story that ties into the three to five key teachable things they're gonna tell and then the call to actions they wanna do at the end. You get all those things together and then you actually give somebody something at the end of the podcast that is gonna allow them to continue the relationship. And it's usually something that's gonna allow them to apply your message. So, and you're gonna find that, you're gonna have a small percentage of people that are gonna take you up on that free offer and end up in your database. So like you wanna have that stuff set up and that doesn't mean you're gonna go on every show and it's just gonna be a flood of leads. Like I, I went on EO Fire and we had, you know, a couple thousand people subscribe to our database. Now that's not really our market. So we didn't really get a ton of business out of that, but it enhanced the credibility of my podcast and, you know, got us more growth and things like that. So like you want to have the right stuff set up, but you also want to have the right expectations, right? Like, um, you know, trust and branding and everything else is important, but if you have the direct response marketing stuff set up, it's good as well. And then on top of that, I'm a little, crazy with the technology side of things. So I also have people on that landing page they're sending people to. Um, I have them using an app called getemails.com because then it's an email retargeting software. Basically, if they don't opt in, they're going to add them to your email list and it's totally white hat and okay. Um, or we're doing retargeting ads that people have been on that page. So you can you know raise your level of people that are opting into that page. So if you have these things set up, you're going to see that benefit. But at the same time, your greater vision is of branding. Yeah. And that's, that's really a cool way to put it because the money does come. And, and what's really funny uh, to me is a lot of people, they're like, I'm either going to sell a 5,000, $20,000 thing, or uh, it's, it's, you know, going to be free. It's just a branding activity. Right. And a lot of people yeah. are kind of skipping over this. Well, why don't you just get them into your world? Like continue the relationship. And, and in our opinion, so and, and that's where people are short sighted, right? Like they, right. They, they get in a podcast and they wait for the leads to shower all over them. And that's just, that's just not how it is, man. It's building right. a relationship. It's getting people in there. It's making sure you're relevant. So they're hearing you in more places. And eventually maybe they come and work with you or they tell somebody else to come work with you. Like we've gotten great referrals from people that I've never met that have heard me on a podcast. It's like, Hey, you got to check this guy out. So like, you got to think about that too. Like you're, and, and it also at the same time, like a lot of it is how the person shows up, right? Like we've had several, we, we've, I, I'm thinking in my head of uh, two clients that were on the same podcast and one made $50,000 from the podcast. The other one said it sucked. So like part of it is also how you show up and we can do the best to prepare you for that and coach you through it, but you have to show up in abundance and, and willing to serve too. Yeah. And, and I love that. I mean, th there's, it's so funny to watch, um, I guess, kind of like people's approach to the branding, right? Because they're, yeah. they're getting, I think people overcomplicate it. You know, branding is really yeah. very simple and I want to talk a little bit with you about kind of the campaign strategy for you guys and, and how you're promoting, because you're not just saying go on podcasts, you're helping them get into publications and do all these other things. Um, with the context of this being a launch, right? They're launching mm -hmm. a product or a service or something, a book, but for right. most people it's a book, right? When you're doing these promotional launches, like what does a campaign typically look like? So it's going to be more shows in a shorter period of time. Um, and it also depends on like how invested you are, right? Like, like honestly, like our best clients have paid for more shows rather than less. So like we had a client that in uh, 
I think it was 90 days and my team hated me for this too. Cause it's a lot of work, but in 90 days we put them on 52 shows or something like that. And that was the one that sold 5,000 books. We had another person that, you know, did a launch and I really was trying to talk them into doing more shows. So they didn't see what they want to do. Cause they're like, Oh, well, I'll do 12 shows in six months. It's like, well, it's really not enough. Cause you need to match up the momentum with what you're doing. And you're going to see that you're going to build momentum, right? Because it's kind of goes back to what I was talking about with blanketing the space. You're, you're going to start being seen and heard in a lot of the same places. And, you know, it's number of times over equals somebody taking action on something. I think it's like they say the average person has to see a message like eight times before they take action on it. That doesn't mean they need to hear you on eight different podcasts, but the point is you want to increase your frequency of people hearing you. And when you have these retargeting ads and stuff like that set up, you're also increasing your frequency of people hearing you and seeing you. So to me, it's, the more shows you can do in a shorter period of time, but you also need to understand there's ramp up time, man. Like, you know, when people get started with us, they don't appear in their first podcast for like 30, 45 days or something like that, because there's a lot of upfront work. So like, if you're like, all right, I'm going to launch a book next month and you're trying to start now, like you are way too late in your campaign. So you need to be thinking with, you know, we're going to be running a campaign 90 days from now. And I want to have everything in alignment because at the same time, like, let's say you're thinking of a campaign now, like different hosts record at different times, different hosts release at different times. So like you need to be thinking as far ahead as you can so you can line stuff up in a similar date area too. Yeah, and, and that, what a great point. I mean, honestly, I hope people understand what he's talking about. He's saying, you know, the blanket, right? Because right. What, what people don't understand is that if they hear you on John Lee Dumas's podcast, you have instant credibility, right? Correct. Or if they hear you on a podcast that they're like, well, I like the show, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a top... 50, it's like mine, right? Like it's like a top 50 podcast, but it's, it's not JLD show. Right. And they're, they're like, okay, great. You know, like they heard me once, but if they hear me there and on Jeremy's podcast and on four or five other podcasts and they see me in, on another thing, they've seen me enough times. They're like, okay, this person obviously is good at what they're doing, especially. And, and there are the white elephants to that too. Like if somebody is like on Joe Rogan or they're on Tim Ferriss or something like that, you're going to be instantly famous or whatever it is. But you know what I mean? It's there, there's very, very, very few of those. Yeah, hundred percent. And I don't know if white elephants is the thing. I think it's white whales, isn't it? Like it's Captain Ahab's gonna be mad at me here. <laughs> yeah, he's like I was hunting elephants. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, so I mean, it's it's good stuff. So I mean, and I love that you're covering that point because there's when people are trying to do campaigns, and this is what's hilarious. I mean, it's frustrating in the, being in the brand. Yeah, experience. they'll do like one podcast or two podcast. Let's even say they do twenty podcasts over a year and a half. Like mm-hmm. that sucked. I was stupid. I'm not doing it again. And I would even flip it on the other side of the coin or they're like, they do 20 episodes as the podcast does and then they give up. And pot fading. Yeah, pot fading, yeah. Like, oh. dude, when you're starting a podcast, you need to be willing to be in it for a year. Like, totally. honestly, be yeah. willing to be in this for a year and don't expect to see most more, you know, much visibility before your first six months. Like, if you're going to start a show, dude, you got to be in it for the long haul. Yeah, well, and yeah, <laughs> I mean, our whole strategy is like, monetize it beforehand. So whether you're getting listeners or not, you're doing great, right? It's, it's a branding activity, but monetize it. Um, so I, I love that you're covering that point because there's a lot of, um, I think just a headache around branding that people are like, well, it's just, it's hard to track. It's not, you know, it's, it's really hard to say, this is how much I made off of this campaign. Yeah. How do you typically work with that? Because I know you're a very numbers driven company. Well, I think first it's like the confusion people have there, right? Like people look at PR and marketing and they think they're the same thing. And then the thing that always bothers me is when, is when people try to say, oh, uh, PR is under marketing. No, no, they're not. Like PR and marketing accomplish different things in your business. Like I, I like to say PR creates the trust and the pieces that marketing can use, right? Like, and that, that's what you have to really look at. Like you're on a podcast, so now you can market it. Um, like, you know, we had somebody that was on a podcast and we also teach people like what to do with episodes. So, like we had somebody remarket it to their list and then close a $10,000 package from remarketing to their own list to somebody that had been hearing them for two years, but just needed to hear that interview. So I, I think at the same time, it's a confusion of terms. So it, we, we really work hard and clearing up that point of like, what does PR do? What does marketing do? And we teach people what they need to do, but we also make sure we're working with companies that have a marketing department, right? Because if, you, if, if we're not working with people that aren't gonna market these pieces, they're probably not the right client for us. Because I knew and I were talking about before we recorded here, like if you're expecting a PR campaign to save your business, there's probably more wrong that I can't fix and neither of us are gonna be happy in the end. Yeah, because it's it's not meant to be the the bucket that bails you out, right? <laughs> right. No, it's it's a growth thing. Like I can't fix structural problems. I can't fix like if your salespeople can't close. But what I can do is I can create more trust. So when you know like leads see things, you know you're gonna have higher quality leads. I can you know 
helped give you pieces that you're going to remarket so you can grow your fan base more. But like you, you have to understand that you have to have a lot of the basics in place to be able to take full advantage of a good PR campaign. Yeah. And, and that's, I hope people are listening to that because that is absolute gold. I know you even, you just said it in passing, but it's like the PR creates the pieces that you use in your marketing. Correct. And people are so just not focused on that, right? Yeah. Because they're, they're, they're searching for the wrong thing with the mice. I, I well, love because what I like to say is like, um, <clears throat> like people are playing this, a, a lot of business owners are playing the game of hungry, hungry hippos, right? They're like, you know, dollars and leads, dollars and leads, dollars and leads, a couple sales, dollars and leads, a couple sales. And what they're realizing, if they don't have a good PR campaign, you're going to be playing hungry, hungry hippos forever, right? Because it's the same reason that a doctor in a small town can charge more, can be open less time and make more money than all the other ones because he's on the right TV shows. He's on the right podcast. He's in the right places. He's a celebrity. And I think that's the difference. Yeah. What a good point. So I want to ask you this question to directly relate it to you and how you're growing your company as yeah. well, because obviously you're using it in your own business. Otherwise, you know, it's kind of sad when you can't promote, <laughs> <laughs> you can't use your own stuff when you're in a B2B services space. Right. So um, if you had to like start completely from scratch again, mm -hmm. what type of business would you build? And then how would you build it like in 90 days? Because I know we've been talking 90 days as a launch. How would you do it in 90 days to build a livable income for your family? Woo. Okay. That's really tough because this business took a lot more than 90 days to build. <laughs> um, so I don't know that I would start this cause it took me six months, not even making any money. Um, so honestly, um, you're probably going to like this, but I would do what you said of figuring out how to monetize it before I started. Cause like my podcast had 10,000 listens in its first 30 days. So yeah. I would figure out how to line it up because I know how to get in front of people. Um, I would figure out, you know, what affiliate partners are going to work with, what products and services align with what I do. And I would get that ready to go and launch a podcast. That's honestly what I do because that's what I did the first time <laughs> and it worked very well. <laughs> <laughs> I like to ask that question because I think it does pull out like with, with a 90 day restriction, you're like, yeah, I do things totally different. Oh, I, well, it's, it, it, as I said, like, you know, this, I was eating ramen for six months when I started this business five years ago, you know? Yeah, no, I, I know how it goes. <laughs> it's, it's feast or famine with business for like the first two years you're in it. Yeah. Even when you make it. I, was, talk, I yes. was talking to my dad about that the other day because my dad's like, he's, he's you know, GED guy. He's, he's always worked like at this, you know, he's started in the factory and he's worked his way up into management, but he doesn't really have any education background to run a business. So like I'm explaining to him like, how much money I made three years ago, what I made last year, what I made this year. And he's like, oh, wow, this year was, it sounded really good. I'm like, yeah, but it was those first two years, dad. Like, uh, <laughs> that's why I need all that money the, the first year that I paid you back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> Love that. Well, and, and you know, I, we're coming up to the end of the interview here already. Yeah. But I mean, when it comes to, to branding and, and what you're talking about, you're like, I'd figure out how to monetize a podcast. So I, yeah. Thank you. I love that you plugged that first off. But it's it's the <laughs> truth though, man, because if you yeah. do it the right way, it's the easiest way to do it because you just have people on that sell products and services that your audience would buy and right. you get a pretty handsome commission off of a high rate product. You're sitting pretty, pretty quickly. Right. Love that. And, and what's so funny too is, is I think, you know, your model is all about choose a high ticket service where you can get high exposure because mm -hmm. that creates a lasting brand. And that's why I wanted to hear your take on it because a lot of people are like, if I had a 90 day restriction, it would just be a business that could provide me cash so I could start what I really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But you're saying lay the foundation for something that yeah. creates a lasting brand. So I love that. Correct. Well, you know, we've covered a lot of topics, Jeremy. So I want to ask you this, where can people connect with you first off? Yeah. Well, we talked a lot about PR and market and branding today. And, you know, like, as I've mentioned, like, there's so much information we covered today that I didn't really know in the beginning. And I don't like people to make those same mistakes. So I created an awesome uh, free piece for your audience called the seven P uh, seven reasons you're not appearing on your favorite podcasts. And they can actually grab that by going over to commandyourbrand.com slash seven reasons. And the word seven to the number seven will work for that. Um, and you know, whether they want to work with us in the future or not, it's just something I think everybody should know. Love that. So make sure you go check that out. Commandyourbrand.com slash seven. What was it? Seven, seven reasons, seven reasons. So make sure you go check that out. I mean, those type of freebies to me, I'm like, like he said, it's, it's to get you to understand branding. It gets you into his world though. It's a world that you want to be in. He's got great content. So make sure you go check that out. Um, and then lastly, Jeremy, before we sign off, what is one final parting piece of guidance you give to everybody? If you could say, Hey, there's one thing I wish you would get from this interview. What would that be? Wow. One piece of final guidance. Like there's a book I would tell them to read and it's not something we really talked about in this interview, but there's a book by Cal Newport called so good. They can't ignore you. 
And I think following your passion is the worst advice you can ever be given because, you know, I'm passionate about a lot of things, but people don't give you money for them. And he talks about finding something you're good at and getting so damn good at it that, you know, people basically can't ignore you. And that's, you know, when you become passionate is when it becomes effortless. So if you check out that book, I would recommend that.